So if I call up the cube power, just like that. So what I suggest as well, actually, is uh, it's probably a, a good idea. I, I do it this way anyway. I, do, I remove the cable from the Nucleo U5 board um, so that I'm not um, trying to, it, it should be isolated, but um, I don't really want the ST link powered up as well um, whilst I'm powering the target from somewhere else. So we can remove JP5, put it to one side. Hopefully you've got your uh, power shield um, plugged into your computer. Um, you, you should be able to connect to the specific COM port and, and click on take control. And you know if it's um, if it's connected properly because it will say board firmware version blah blah blah. And if you've not updated the board, it might be version 106. Mine's with version 108. It doesn't really matter for this example. So first thing we want to do is we want like like we did with Anders is to calibrate the power shield board. So before you plug in the the power lead from the shield to the JP5 pin, just click on calibrate and make sure uh, that it, it gets a, a green tick, okay? Now you are able to connect the power lead to the JP5 pin. Okay, I've now done that. And that enables us to start um, um, capturing information from the board. But first of all, let's change the board sampling frequency. And this time we will put it at max, okay? We can, if we want, change the acquisition time to infinite, but um, we only really want to look at a few seconds worth because if we remember, we are running one second at 256 hertz and one second at 64 hertz, and then we are turning the processor back on again. So if we set it to 10 seconds, that gives us a nice span to look at. Now, we can hit the start acquisition button and we should start seeing data. But now if you press the black button on the Nucleo, the reset button, um, you will actually see the activity. Now it looks, it's so minuscule here uh, because I, I've not, it's not auto zooming on the Y axis, but I can zoom in very easily. Um, after you've done every acquisition, it asks you if you want to save a log. We don't need to save a log at this point, so I'm just gonna cancel that and zoom in on this area here by left clicking with the mouse button. And this is, Okay, so this should be two seconds. So uh, 4.8 to 6.8, yeah, that's about right. Um, so this is the where we're taking the uh, 256 and uh, 64 hertz samples. And um, again, if you haven't already done it, select on the um, the show report button here, and that will give you this um, uh, section of information that shows you uh, what the average current is over the selected time frame. So if I was to have a look at this, it's about 4.9 um, microamps, which actually is probably a little bit higher than we're probably expecting, uh, but not by much. Let's have a look. Um, what was it meant to be? 4.194. So actually, it's it's pretty close. It's pretty close. 4.9 um, microamps. Now I may it may be a poor calibration, or I may have missed a step. Um, but this gives you the current consumption during the entire ADC sampling phase. So this is sampling at two rates via DMA. I can scroll back out again so we can see that um, process is running uh, and then it uh, goes into stop two mode 
samples at one rate then samples the other rate and then um, comes back out of stop two mode but this period here is um, is very low power consumption even though it's sampling from the adc it's quite a long session uh, to show you how to use this um, lp bam configuration tool basically what we've done is we've created using that tool a um, set of configurations to run the DMA channel, the LPDMA um, in, with two channels, one to update a timer with two different uh, uh, frequency rates and the other one to do some sampling of an ADC. We could have done it all in one channel, but we wanted to show you that we can use multiple channels for different things. And um, we're showing that this can handle data whilst the rest of the chip is, is in low power mode. Now, there are some more slides um, where we compare doing this uh, at a faster um, sample rate or rather faster core clock frequency for the ADC and the timer and the DMA block. And um, you'll find that actually that doesn't increase the power consumption much at all. Power consumption is dependent very heavily on the actual sample rate that we're taking the ADC samples because that's determining how long the ADC is essentially functioning for. But what does make a difference is if we um, up the sample rate, then the power consumption goes up, but the savings over um, using a standard uh, interrupt wake up mechanism where you run a DMA transfer, you wake up, process the data, then go back to sleep. The savings between that get more and more significant as the as the ADC sample rate goes up. 